Hello and welcome back to OC Avery. In today's video, we're taking the final uh, step and the push forward uh, for the conditioning period. It's very soon that the breeding season will start for the native birds uh, for when we're actually pairing them up in a few weeks time. So we're just doing the last final push and the last bit of preparation before we go actually into the breeding season from just the birds being separate and, and being conditioned. Uh, and obviously it is important important to keep the birds conditioned throughout the breeding season anyway which we will see uh, in a few months time um, from there we also have a new addition to the bird room uh, something a bit different something that I didn't plan uh, but I was, I was lucky enough to get offered uh, this bird which we'll take a look at a little later uh, and what he is being used for this year uh, or what the plan is for him anyway uh, we've, we've moved on a few birds as well uh, there's a couple of birds that I, after working out my pairings uh, I've, I've done this past week or so, uh, worked out who's going to go where. There was a few pairs which I just thought would be uh, better suited going elsewhere because they don't have any long-term plans in any of my lines. Uh, and really, I don't want to be focusing um, uh, much attention on those sorts of birds. So we have moved a few birds on and then finally we will be having the weekly update where we take a look at what's happened in the bird room uh, this past week which you guys haven't seen uh, and we'll be taking a look at some of the nests that i built which you will have seen in a video earlier this week uh, for the native finches and actually a few different designs i've worked on So for these next few weeks, it's sort of the final preparation for the conditioning for the, of the birds uh, just before we pair them up. Now they will be continue to, con to be conditioned throughout the breeding season because you want to keep them in prime condition. Um, but really this is just before I pair up the majority of the birds. We do have the mule and hybrid pairs um, all together now. Uh, that they're, they're paired up and have been since October. Uh, but for the rest of the native finches, they're all uh, separate cocks and hens. So for this week on the menu is pearl morbide. Now this is very simple uh, to prepare. Uh, very easy now a word of advice is I know that some people um, it is recommended that you put 100 grams of pearl morbide to 200 ml of water um, that is recommended so I would always recommend and tell you to stick to that and the main reason being is that if you have pearl morbide and you only put 100 uh, grams of water to it let's say then the 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 um, the, the actual pearls are only half soaked so that means that they're still uh, essentially they could double in size with uh, what they're going to take in and the last thing you, you want to be doing is feeding that to your bird and then the pearls actually expanding inside them and um, so that's just a word of advice uh, and a, as a recommendation so you're going to want to get your pearls and i use a, a, an ice cream tub carton um put the put the pearls in there and then i get my water and uh, for this example, I am going to be using uh, Calcium Vet Gochi. That's by Vi Bio Vet Line. Um, sadly, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get it into the UK because of Brexit um, and certain restrictions on that. But any liquid calcium supplement will do. Um, you know, Calci Lux, um, I know that I think the bird care company do some. Um, there's plenty of different liquid calcium options uh, out there on the market. So I'm going to add that to my 200 ml of water in the correct dosage and then add that to the, the actual dry pearls. And what that's going to mean is that the pearls will absorb that water with the calcium in it. So it's actually going to get in that supplement into the birds. Um, what I've been doing is I, I feed this now uh, at the moment for the next few weeks. I'll be giving them this about three to four times per week, uh, pretty much every other day. So what I'll do is one day I will go with uh, a calcium supplement. I'll be uh, giving them that. And then the next time I give it them, they'll be getting a uh, fertility or conditioning supplement. So Omnivit, uh, you could use Mutivit or you could use Fertivit. They're just some um, ones that I use by Versalaga. There are obviously plenty of other options on the market for uh, fertility vitamins and um, multivitamins, which you can just give the birds. I would recommend only doing one because uh, mixing it, you don't want to give it a foul taste and then the birds not eat it. Eat it. Uh, and then I supplement that in uh, egg food drawers and finger drawers to the birds. 
you, I'm, I'm pretty much giving them now about two finger drawers worth per bird uh, over the next few weeks. If you want to make sure that they are getting their general seed mix as well, whatever you're feeding them. Um, but on top of that, I am giving them the extra uh, pearl morbide, the egg food uh, one week, the conditioning seed, um, germinated seed and all different things like that to give the birds a balanced and varied diet. And with the pearl morbide now prepared in here, just going to have to sit for uh, two, two uh, hours or, or so. Uh, it doesn't take too long to soak up, but I want to make sure it is all soaked up. Um, and, and there's plenty there which, which feeds my birds for, for, for a day. Uh, generally, I'll give that them in the morning. If you do have time, if you can give them some in the morning and some around mid-afternoon, the birds are going to take it straight away because it's fresh in their cage uh, rather than leaving it to um, get ghost down, for example, um, or, or, or anything like that. So that sort of, so we'll give it the birds once it's ready. So approximately an hour later, the pearl morbide has now set. It's perfect. The birds are going to enjoy it and it's soaked up all the calcium. So I'm going to get that into their egg food drawers now and the finger drawers for some of the other birds um, and they should devour this in almost no time. <music> So for the rest of the birds, we have the red pole hens in a very good condition. They're getting there now, they are fit enough. Um, and I'm hoping, you know, I have seen some birds picking up nest material, but we'll have to see how they get on um, over the next few weeks with that. But I don't expect red poles to even be looking at building until about mid-April. Uh, the same goes for these pairs down here. They've absolutely wrecked the um, newspaper put down at the weekend. Um, stripping that back and pulling at it so that'll be a job to clean that up uh, give the cage clean out I do that weekly for these guys uh, and that's same for the Siskin hens for the red pole cocks we've obviously got the bats on just at the moment all getting unwell uh, we, we're getting the screeching squealing sounds which is good they are coming in condition and it shouldn't be too long before they are in uh, full condition. And as for the rest of the birds in the flight, they're all moving in the right direction. We obviously have the crossbills which we look at. Um, they're, they're moving right um, and, and everything is going right for them. They are starting to breed um, and, and come in, you know, they are in breeding condition now. For the rest of the birds, we've got all the cockbirds and all the hens outside, but they are separate. We've got uh, the Norwich cocks, they're starting to warble. The, the bullfinch cock is uh, is whistling. We've got the goldfinch cock, the Siberian goldfinch cock, he's whistling. We've got the greenfinches making the sounds greenfinches make, siskins making that sound. Um, we've got all the hens there, all in good condition, all fit and healthy. Uh, something I did want to include in this video to show you. So Mac Finch sent me a video uh, of how his Norwich are developing uh, and conditioning. And these birds are absolutely fantastic. They're in very good condition. And uh, I do know that he'll be looking to pair these up around the start of April. So this is how his Norwich are developing so far. It's looking promising. It's really good. The birds are fit. They're bouncing. And that is exactly what I want to see with especially some of these larger birds 
um, which are notoriously harder to breed. So I'd like to say thank you to Mike Finch for sending that video in and I hope you do learn a bit of something from that and, and see where his Norwich are at and maybe if you keep Norwich where yours should be at. As I mentioned um, a little earlier, we did move on a few birds. So we moved on a pair of green finches. We had an agate hen to a agate pied cock. We bred off them uh, last year. We got a, a nice normal pied uh, youngster from them, cock bird, who we've got now for this year's breeding season. I also moved on a pair of siskins who we bred last year, a pair of siskin mules who we bred last year, and uh, an a, a normal split agate greenfinch cock. And the reason being for this is that I felt that these birds weren't going to add anything this year. The greenfinches wouldn't have any long-term plans and by the end of the year, I would have just um, moved them on and their youngsters. So it wasn't worth keeping them and they would be better suited going elsewhere. Same for the siskins. We've got two pairs of siskins. I'm not looking for a third pair. Siski mules, uh, I haven't got any, hadn't any intention of actually showing them, so there wasn't any need to um, really keep them on. Um, they could have acted as a pair of feeders, but I've got five pairs of feeders now, which I feel should be enough. Um, touch wood anyway before I jinx it. Um, but either way, I think that's um, you know that's this left us some more room for uh, young birds, especially, uh, and it should all be fine from there. Um, and, and then same for the egg, the normal split egg eight green finch cock uh, with the new bird in from Mark Pontin. Then uh, the, the other the, the, the spare cock bird I had got, he wasn't needed. So now for our green finches, we have um, two pied cocks. We have the fantastic exhibition cock from Mark. We have uh, then three hens from a, a decent line of birds as well. So that does leave us with three pairs of green finches for this year. All good quality birds, um, or some some better quality than others obviously but we'll have to see how they develop this season and over the next few years as we develop the lines of these birds um for a quick rundown of the rest of the birds in pairings we're having nine pairs of red poles this year two pairs of siskins three pairs of green finches two pairs of common crossbills a pair of siberian bullfinches a trio of siberian goldfinches uh a few, two pairs of new colour, two pairs of Norwich and three pairs of feeders uh, and then that is also including we have the hybrid pairs as well so we have the Greenfinch Crossbill hybrid, the um, what is it um, the Norwich Greenfinch pair so that's the uh, Greenfinch mule pair we have the Goldfinch mule pair and we have the um, Siskin Red Pole hybrid pair as well so that's going to be interesting to see what happens there uh, Fingers crossed we will get some mules and hybrids from them and fingers crossed that we should have a good year this year. So now I want to show you the newcomer to the shed, which is the goldfinch behind me. Now this cockbird was bred last year and um, I've got a, a few friends who do a lot of exotic birds, uh, keep a lot of exotic birds, parrots, uh, and different things like that. And they was doing an aviary clearance uh, for, I believe it was an older chap who simply just couldn't carry on um, keeping his birds anymore due to deteriorating health. Uh, and he had a really large flight uh, full of birds. And uh, this was one of the birds. Now it was in with a load of zebra finches, canaries, Bengalese finches, javas, um, I believe he said two or three hundred birds in this one really large flight. Uh, and this was the only goldfinch. The guy bred it last year, moved on the parent and thought he'd keep this one. And and, and sadly, he's had to move them all on. So um, the, 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 the guys um, kept all of the, the zebra finches and stuff, doing an avian clearance and uh, helping the guy out. And they, they offered this bird to me and uh, I thought I couldn't resist the opportunity to get another goldfinch cock in. Uh, obviously we do have the one with the, the satinette canary at the moment, the cock bird, uh, for the muling. And we do have this new cock bird in now. He's lovely, he's definitely a yellow bird, really rich in colour and a really nutty brown, um, which is fantastic, absolutely lovely bird. Uh, and uh, you know, I hope you do like that bird as well. So the plan for him will be uh, this year, he could sit on the sidelines on the simple basis that um, we haven't exactly got him paired up. Uh, and I can't get a British goldfinch, uh, a native goldfinch hen in for him anyway. So 
he'll be going in, he'll be, we'll be keeping him for sure. But I am thinking that I'll probably um, get, get, get a good round out of the new colour canaries and then maybe try and run him with the hens. Maybe we put him in with a, 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 the uh, either a red eyed satinette hen or the yellow mosaic hen. Um, and we'll just, we'll just see what happens from there. Hopefully, he, he, he treads a. Um, and if he does, then we'll get some more goldfinch mules. If not, then there is all the, the other options that we could have him with a, maybe we take a, a red pole, we, we put him in with a red pole uh, later in the season, maybe we do it with a green finch. We, we could put him in with the crossbills maybe a little later on in the season and, and see if we did get a, a goldfinch crossbill hybrid, which would be astonishing really, considering they, they haven't been paired up for one and that they aren't even bonded. And um, yeah, it's, it's a difficult hybrid to achieve because of the times of year they breed. We'll have to see, so uh, I thought I'd just show you him uh, and hope you do like him and we will have some good plans for him this year, uh, hopefully with a couple of different new colour canary hens and maybe some finch hens. And he is quite a flighty bird as well, uh, sim very similar to the, the goldfinch I got prior, quite flighty birds. Um, it, he's just never been in a cage before, so it's a bit of a different environment for him. But we'll work with him over the next few months and, and fingers crossed, all going well, uh, we should have a steady goldfinch by the end of it and maybe uh, some goldfinch mules or some hybrids from him. So I've actually made the decision that it would be probably the best um, outcome and beneficial to bring the Norwich inside. Now, uh, this is based on the fact that the Norwich have been outside all winter. Um, the wet weather is a little bit foul at the moment. I, I've noticed that these birds especially um, haven't been developing as well as I think they could be doing. Um, it, it like when you compare them to the rest of the British birds, as well as the other canaries. So I've decided to bring them in, I've got the, uh, the two hens in the top in a three foot breeder and the two cocks in the bottom in a three foot breeder. Um, and it just means that I can monitor them a little bit more closely and um, actually monitor exactly what they're taking in. So I can give them uh, egg food daily and know they are getting a share rather than competing with the other finches. Um, you know plenty of food and then also just making sure that they're ba they are bathing because i have noticed and um, that especially for the cockbirds some of them have been um rather more chased away by the the green finches um and the bullfinch so i want to make sure that these guys are in good condition and that, that they are developing so i've decided that the best thing to do would be to bring them in and we're just gonna have to see how they get on over the next few weeks before we do pair them up around the start of April. And just as an extra uh, sort of move forward for them, I've got them on Omnivit in their drinkers uh, and that should work well. I've got some egg food in there. They had pearl morbide yesterday. Um, they got a, a mix of egg food and conditioning seed there. We've got uh, uh, one of the weaning cage baths on for the hens and uh, just a little smaller pot in for the cockbirds. Just because these don't fit on these, um, they're actually bu budgie uh, fronts on that so far. So uh, we'll see how they get on over the next few weeks and uh, fingers crossed, all going well. They should move forward and be ready for breeding in the next few weeks. So for the weekly update this week, we are first going to look at the pair of uh, yellow mosaic canaries. Now this pair you did see last week and they have built up a nest. We're in the same situation almost as last week. Um, the hen has been a little bit picky with what she wants to line the bottom of the nest with. Um, I did come in a few days ago and she pulled out the complete bottom of the nest. Um, she clearly wasn't happy with it, but that's fine. That's no problem. But we've got the main structure there, which is important. So I've been giving her some jute nest material and some of the uh, Quico mixed fibers. So that's got dog hair in it, uh, different animal hairs uh, and different different fibers in that so that's worked well so we are seeing a, a, a move forward with them and I'm really hoping by next week we might have an egg it is looking that way because she is putting the final touches on the nest now but we'll have to see for the rest of the canaries they aren't far behind we have um, two pairs of feeders which are I believe five cross and um, they are 
getting there now. They're starting to carry nest material and they are putting it in the nests, but it's um, it's sort of a half-hearted attempt. They haven't made a, a full decision yet as uh, if they actually do want to go down right now, but that's fine because we still, you know, it is early um, and the, the main purpose of having them is as feeders for the natives rather than to breed them straight. So I'm not uh, concerned and worried. We do have the, um, the, the, the um, new color hen as well in with the uh, red pole mule cock. So we're gonna have to see what happens with them. No developments as of yet, but we'll just um, we'll have to see how they move forward. Uh, for the crossbills, both pairs are now putting in effort to build. We haven't got the um, full drive as such for breeding uh, for them wanting to move forward and breed in terms of building the nest. Uh, once they get going, they don't usually stop until the nest's complete. But what they have done is they've started to put nest material in the nests. And I think I just waiting a little bit longer before they actually um, fully decide to go down. But it's not a problem. We've still got a few months yet for, for breeding the crossbills. You know, it's um, with it being about mid-March, I am expecting them to be down very soon. Um, we did have one, a hen actually, nearly finish up in a nest last, this time last year. But I'm not overly concerned. We've got a few months left yet and we have plenty of vitamins and calcium uh, to, to keep them going hopefully into the summer months and hopefully get a, a, a two rounds out of the pairs, which will be good. Uh, for the green finch crossbill hybrid pair, um, hybrid birds and trying to breed hybrids is never going to be easy as i've spoke to many people about um, and where we're at with those guys the, uh, the the cock bird and the hen are being a little bit aggressive towards each other um so i am cutting back on the omnivit for for them both just because i don't want uh, the cock bird to get over aggressive and hurt the hen however some good signs is that i have managed to record the pair um breeding and mating and the, the cock bird treading her so you might have seen that earlier in the week on natives in norwich but if you haven't it's here now um really good sign they're both in condition so she has got the whole nest built now which is really promising and i am hoping that we will get an egg very soon it is just taking her a little bit longer because she's a young hen as well so um she, she's not a year old yet she's from the pair of bread last year she was born um it's a hatched about mid-april so uh, she's not a year old yet, but I'm not too concerned. Um, we've, we've got the summer to breed them, so we'll have to see what happens there, but it is a step in the right direction. So that does bring me to the end of this week's video. So I hope you've enjoyed it and found some of these tips useful. Um, I do apologize for maybe a shorter video uh, and just seeing a few different things. I've had quite a busy week this week from being in lockdown to produce some of the, the previous videos uh, to now actually being back at school studying my A-levels. So um, it is a little bit different um, and I'll, you know, I've not had as much time to film in the day so I have been filming in the evenings um, and, and at weekends. So thank you very much for watching. If you're new please do subscribe. If you've liked this video hit us, uh, hit the like, hit us a thumbs up and give us a thumbs up um, and then hit the notification bell if you have uh, found this useful and you want to see more of my content to be updated every single time and share this video with someone else who you think would enjoy my channel and be interested. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.